Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder, Wrath of the Kingmaker. <laughs> Last time we uh, finished up the Lamashtu Shrine stuff, and we recruited Sana, Sana, to be one of our advisors. Now she's an evil advisor. We're probably not going to use her, ever, but um, she's there if we need her, and I figured we know she's evil. We'll watch her, make sure she doesn't do anything extreme. Um, we've got kind of got this very libertarian sort of aspect where it's like as long as you're not hurting anybody do whatever you want in my barony I don't care who you are do what you want don't kill anybody we're good right which she kind of confessed that she does kill people if she wants to but um you know we'll deal with that when the time comes if it comes um, but we need to get back to the capital because we need to talk with our council so that's where we're headed now and I think we're making pretty decent time on everything. I'm pretty happy with the way our kingdom is uh, developing. I feel like I've been doing a very good job of keeping it under control. Any problems and we've been at peace and been expanding. I'm very happy with the way things are going. So let's go ahead and back to the capital. It's going to take 22 hours. We've done this trip a couple times now. So let's go ahead and get there. Fortunately, nice. we're getting fatigued, Don't you think? which might slow us down a bit. And of course, we have to run into enemies, and we're not gonna avoid. We did evade them, good. I know we need to kind of stop doing that because it's we're missing out on some XP, but and some potential just events. But um, yeah, to the throne room. Ruling a kingdom is a serious task. Make sure you visit your capital at least once each month. Sound advice. Sound advice. I always did visit my capital once a month. I'm hungry. When we st The throne room is full of people. Your allies stand around the throne, waiting in silence as you approach. The atmosphere is tense. Today, you'll be discussing the strange and deadly blight that recently struck your barony. The gloomy silence is only penetrated by loud chewing. Knock Knock has grabbed a whole fried chicken from the table and is busily devouring it, ignoring everyone else completely. Ah, good for you, Knock Knock. Jod folds his hands on his chest. Well now, now that we're all here, let's sum up what we know. We've each spent a lot of time and effort to learn what we can about where the monsters come from and what's causing this strange disease. I hope this conversation can help shed some light on the situation. Keston shakes his head slowly. We need to hurry. If we don't find the source of this blight and eliminate it, we may end up with a rebellion on our hands. Let's summarize what we found up to this point. Can we keep people calm, persuade them to wait a bit longer? The duty of the people is to obey the laws and orders of their ruler. I will hang any rebels I find and banish their families. Can we keep the people calm? Keston frowns. Your grace, it's hard to expect loyalty and obedience from people in times like this. They're looking for something or someone to blame. I I didn't want to be the one to say it, but... Jod cuts Keston off with a gesture. People think you're cursed, your grace. And it would be in your own best interest to quickly discover the cause of the disaster that keeps claiming the lives of your subjects. Mm. Keston, are you still with the militia? The guard hesitates, furrowing his brow. Your Grace, I understand these people very well. They're tired of just waiting and hoping, but for now, I can guide their eagerness for action in a positive direction. I'm glad to help them avoid hasty decisions. That could cause more trouble. At the same time, I'm convinced that a crowd of terrified villagers who've armed themselves can't truly be our salvation. The barony has a chance only so long as it has authorities and laws. My top priority is helping you remain the authority and that law. I didn't think that was uh, not the case. Why are you bringing that up? <laughs> Keston takes a deep breath after the unusually long speech. I just wanted to assure you that I'm on your side. I didn't... Yeah, I didn't think you weren't. Now that now I'm starting to wonder, though. <laughs> Jod, how'd you come about these rumors of a curse? He bows his head. Each day, I see dozens of infected, Your Grace. Many people have lost their loved ones or fear they soon will. They all want to know what's going on, who deserves the blame, whose sins brought this blight upon them. Trust me, every day 
The number of people willing to pin the blame on you grows. They say you and your barony are cursed. Of course, I don't believe a word of it. This isn't a curse, but some disease which has somehow manifested itself in your barony. Jod raises his eyes to meet yours. Trust me, I won't leave you until I find the source of this disease, regardless of what these poor people may have in their, may say in their delirium. Let's summarize what we know. Jod cast an interesting and look at you closely. Jod, the surgery shows showed that it was magic seeds causing this disease, correct? Right. Judging from the location in the patient's bodies, these seeds were ingested. It seems likely that they're initially extremely small, almost invisible, and people may simply swallow them with their food. Since once the seed is in their stomach, it begins to grow and cause the symptoms we've seen in our patients. As soon as the seed gains enough strength, it sprouts and turns into magical portals, just like a bud turning into a flower. Arastal, forgive me. Jod stares into the distance a moment. Something must have possessed me to say that. It really does look like blooming. Each seed tears the body of its victim, just as a flower tears its bud. Keston, we discovered that the Lamashtu cultists weren't involved with the monster infestation. He nods. It doesn't mean they're innocent of other crimes, but the monsters the monster invasion at least is not their work. Hearing the name Lamashtu draws Knock Knock's attention. Mother is not to blame here. Told you, but who listens to me? Goblins obviously like having all these monsters around. To them, it's a sign of Lamashtu's benevolence. Keston grunts. I'd say they're just excited by anything new that happens. I wouldn't be surprised if they're linked to the story somehow, but I doubt the seeds are created by goblin shamans. Besides, a plan like this seems a little... beyond the local goblin chief's intelligence. Knock Knock raises his head. Know what I think? I think Goblin King is rotten lice scratcher. Shaman plays him like a re like a reed pipe, babbles about Lamashtu, then plots behind his back. Can you tell me where these monsters come from, Tristian? The ones that appear because of this bloom? Tristian raises his eyes from the papers at the on the table. Undoubtedly from the world alien to our own. All the monsters appearing from the bloom are exceptionally large and strong. It would be rare to encounter such specimens in the Stolen Lands, or even on most of Galarian. But it's impossible to say what it is that lies on the other side of the portals that in, that's intent on killing your people. That's all I needed to know about the results. Kesson and Jod exchange glances. Tristian continues to dig through his papers. So, the bloom's essential properties are strange seeds getting into people's bodies, which causes their disease and eventually creates a magical portal. Now we just need to discover where the seeds are coming from. Tristian, who'd been examining the map on the table from the shadows, gives a small cough. If I may, I've noticed an interesting detail. Well, two details, to be precise. First, the seeds afflict mostly the villagers. There have been no recorded cases of diseases within the city limits, except for those who came here looking for cure. Jod nods. That's right. Thus, we can assume a common factor in how people are exposed to these seeds. Many villagers get their foods from the same territory. Tristian slowly shakes his head. I don't think food is the problem. Take a look. He points at the map. We have the most cases of the disease here, here, and over here. Monsters mostly attack here and here. The cleric's fingers travel down the map, tapping points along the fluid line. A fluid line. You see, the situation is most dire along the banks of the, Gert of the Gudrun River. Everyone examines the map closely. Arastal, have mercy. Jod exhales slowly. Exactly. Along the river. That must be where the seeds come from. From their drinking water. We have to go upstream and find the source of this blight. Keston, the militia often must, the most, the militia most often finds the monsters by the river, right? There are dozens of villages along the riverbank. Hundreds of people. How many are likely already infected? Keston, you find most monsters along the river? Hmm. We used to think the monsters were just coming to the river to drink. Keston rubs his forehead. But if what the cleric says is right, how many are likely already infected? Jod looks at you closely. Are you suggesting we wait for them to all succumb to this bloom, Baron? No. <laughs> what? Let's pray we can deal with the situation before that happens. We have to go upstream and find the source of the blight. Knock, knock, jumps at your words. 
Take me, me. The goblin bears his sharp, crooked teeth. I want to settle the score with the king. Keston straightens up and flexes his shoulders. If you allow me, Baron, I'd like to take the lead on this. I'll take the best members of the militia, of the militia with me and sweep the woods along the river. We'll look under each and every no, each and every rock if needed. Keston muffles a cough. After everything they've been through, these people deserve a chance to discover the source of their misfortune. No, Keston. We have to deal with this carefully and rationally. Go to your people and await my arrival. You have my permission, Keston. I won't deprive people of the opportunity to find the cause of their troubles. I need some time to think over your offer. You have my permission, Keston. I thank you, my Baron. I hope you'll join us soon. Keston gives a short bow, turns around, and leaves. Tristan, how did you find the link between the disease and the river? The cleric glances pensively at the map. You see, Baron, these seeds are not the only signs of something abnormal at work. Remember the ruins? Where we first met? The glade near those ruins, full of huge flowers? Glades such as that tender, tend to appear all over the stolen lands. Seems strange, does it not? Especially if we take into account that the magic seeds and the portals they create look like flowers themselves. Jod even called this disaster the bloom. I'd like to research this natural phenomenon, and perhaps... Tristan stops talking aloud, as loud, hasty steps are heard from the main entrance. Are you back already, Keston? Keston runs into the room. Your Grace, we have trouble. The peasants are rioting. Ugh. That's only that's the only situation these nitwits could come up with? Solution, rather? Don't worry, Baron. As long as they're not setting fire to the streets, we still have a chance of coming to a peaceful resolution. If you allow me, I'll go and speak with them. Do my best to calm the crowd down. And if peace doesn't prevail, your guards and I will stand with you. Let's go. I can hear their shouting even from here. How dare they riot against me. They're right for liege. The murmuring crowd takes up almost the entire square. The murmuring turns to shouts at your arrival, and a stone flies out of the crowd and strikes the cobbles at your feet. There's no cobbles. There he is! Out at last, damn his eyes! Please hear me out before you lynch me. I know you're tired and disgruntled. I am too. Day after day, I and my companions seek a solution to your misfortunes. We've saved so many from this fatal disease, and the gods have mercy, we can save even more. So please, let us do what we can. Return to your homes, to your loved ones. They need you, just as I need your patience and good faith. Silence. Please let us speak. Tell me what brings you to my door. Let Jod speak. I command you, leave this place immediately. Keep this up, and you'll all regret coming here. Tell me what brings you to my door. Your voice is drowned out by the crowd's uproar. The peasants in the front raises, raise their torch, pitchforks, and clubs as they shout at you. Please hear me out before you lynch me. The crowd before you sways and mumbles. People look at one another, talk in a hushed tone, shake their heads and frown. It seems rebels who were screaming and jeering a minute ago lost all their confidence. Finally, one of the peasants opens his mouth. The Baron is right. You really believe this? It's pure nonsense. Don't you get it? We could run the Baron through, but it wouldn't change a thing. He's of more use to us alive than dead. There we go. So be it, Baron. We'll let you pass. But don't forget, we're trusting you with our lives. Find the source. Save our children from this terrible sickness. To be honest, that was a little... That was a little easy. <laughs> I feel like they weren't really serious. Just like, hey guys, I just come out. Guys, guys, go back to your homes. It's gonna be good. It's all good, guys. Don't worry. And they're like, oh yeah, okay, we'll trust you. <laughs> Resting would be nice, don't you think? 
A sweet smile plays on the tiefling's lips. I came to discuss something that rulers love more than sun and the sky, and subjects hate more than the plague. That thing fills a state with strength. That golden honey that diligent bees carry to their master's treasury. Yes, I'm here to discuss taxes. Nobody has any more doubts that your power is here to stay. No one has any illusions that your throne will be knocked over by the first gust of the wind, or that these lands will ever be open to gangs again. And that means your subjects are ready to wear the heavy yoke of taxes. Of course, some will grumble, but that's to be expected. We'll first spend the taxes of the obedient on pacifying the ones who rebel. You've done a fine job seizing power. Now it's time to enjoy its fruits. I suggest we double the taxes. Double them? Okay. Uh, I have another proposal. We will lower the taxes slightly, allowing the economy to grow in the future. First, all we need to think about, first of all, we need to think about the common people. We'll raise the taxes by one third. I think this will be a fair solution. Let us double the taxes. The barony needs all the money it can get. Gains two BP each week, or pay two BP. We don't not pay it now. Forget that. Any opportunity resolved by the treasurer increases economy by one. Ooh. Interesting. Minus one community, minus two loyalty, plus three economy, plus two BP a week. Unrest state worsens. Barony effect, high taxes, any problem by reduces the economy by one. I kind of feel like this is the way, way to go. It's the complete opposite of what she said, but. We need to think about the common people, Kanira. The joy on Kanira's face dissolves into disappointment. I keep thinking about the ordinary people day and night. About what we can afford to take from them. What we should leave them. How to reward the obedient and punish the rebels. While you seem blind to the very nature of power. So be it. I'll abate, to, I'll abate the taxes. But be warned. Excessive kindness ruins rulers far faster than excessive cruelty. I'll keep that in mind. However... Your proposal didn't take into account who's obedient and who's rebellious. <laughs> it just raised taxes for everybody. Hello, your grace. Hmm, feels strange. It's amazing I can just go and have a chat with an actual baron. I wanted to talk about Ekin. I'm worried about him lately. Although worried might be too strong a word. He is way too gloomy. Even more so than usual if that's possible. Life without a family must be hard for him. But he's not completely alone. He has us. I know we can replace what he lo can't replace what he lost, but we must remind him that we are here and he can talk to us. What are you getting at? What I'm getting at is that we should hold a merry revelry and use the opportunity to talk to him, heart to heart. If we just invite him for a drink, he'll no doubt refuse. So we must organize everything in secret. We'll gather party, we'll, we'll gather guests, prepare food and drink, bring Ekin, and have so much fun. I'll bring my loot. What do you say? Helping Ekin is our camaraderie, camaraderie duty. And if we need to throw a feast to do that, then that's what we're going to do. You're right. I can't stop looking. I can't stand looking at Ekin's gloom face any longer. Time to cheer him up. Neither grief nor joy should be excessive. I think you've got a point. I don't care about Ekin's inner turmoil. But that's no reason to turn down a good party. Apparently that's more of like a chaotic evil, but... No, my responsibilities do not include consoling or entertaining any of you. Kattegut, you're right. Lindsay's face brightens with a smile. Wonderful. As we know, great minds think alike. I've talked to Alina, the innkeeper, and she's happy to help us. Although, between us, I'm not sure what made her so enthusiastic. Anyway, you should talk to her. And I should go and think what I'm going to play. And one more thing. Don't be late. I fear if we don't pull Ekin out of this mood now, it'll be too late. All right, beast of beasts. I think we, yeah. I guess we'll do that first, even though the barony is falling apart. <laughs> Failure. Inhabitants of the nearby villages were sent to clear the collapsed mine, 
craftsmen have left their workshops and farmers their fields, causing commercial life in the region to stagnate. The visitors have been met, plus one community. The Baron granted the advisor an audience, plus one economy. The visitors have been met with. Good. Okay, looking at our stats and our BP, we have 100 BP. Economy just reached level three. Okay, military needs to get higher to get that next step. And culture is at rank one. We could support the treasurer. That's 14 days. 22 days left on that. Two days left on that. Okay. And we are making less BP a, a month now or a week, which is unfortunate, but I don't think the weekly BP is really that important. I think most of our BP is going to eventually come from um, just our gold. In due time. Uh, okay, let's go do this party for Ekin. Get that done. Before we head out to deal with the, um, the, the monsters. I think those are only two quests that we received, right? Adventures can wait. Go up the Gudrun River to find Keston and his militia. It's time to explore the Gudrun River to the east of the capital. That's where those vicious seeds come from. Keston and his militia have already gone ahead, so we have to catch up with him and join the search. Talk to Alina, the innkeeper. Who should we ask to prepare food and drinks if not Alina? Her inn is famous for its cooking throughout the capital. Let's see what she has to offer. Yeah, let's make uh, Ekin happy. As you approach, the red-headed innkeeper curtsies awkwardly. Your Grace, you must have come to talk about the feast for Ekendayo. I'd be happy to. I'll provide the food and the drinks. Everything will be first class. How much will this idea cost me? Don't mention it, Your Grace. It's such an honor for me. Everything is on the house. Who serve at the feast? With your permission, Your Grace, for such an honor, with such esteemed guests, I'd like to do it myself, Your Grace. Alina smiles awkwardly turning an even brighter red. I recommend your enthusiasm. Why would you? Oh, your grace, it, isn't it so? It'd be my pleasure. I hope everyone likes it, including a Kandayo. Then we agreed only to agree on the plate. We need to agree only on a place. I guess there's no way, two ways about it. We have to have it right here in this room. We can decorate it, or of course. Tavi, forgive me, but if... We are thinking about the same Ekendayo. He will likely feel uncomfortable indoors. The feast must definitely be held in the woods. If Madam and Keeper is up for such a challenge. Elena is speechless, either due to astonishment, indignation, or both. Who are you? The woman stands tall with a calm smile. My name is Davi. I'm passing through the city. Ekin and I know each other from long ago. Since back when he guarded caravans. We traveled together for a long time. Pressing her lips, the innkeeper studies Davi carefully. Why would Ekin want to feast in the woods? He is a born ranger. He always feels calmer under the open sky. I know him well. Can you think of a suitable suitable place? Hmm. How about the royal hunting grounds? I have royal hunting grounds? This is the first time hearing about it. I've seen the place in passing. It's not far from the city. It's a cozy co it's a cozy nook. And that's and there's water nearby. Hmm. What do you say, Alina? The innkeeper sizes up the woman opposite her. I might not know Ekendayo as well as some, but I see no trouble in holding a feast in the woods, or on a mountaintop, or on a swamp for that matter. Wonderful. In that case, I'll gladly meet both of you in the agreed upon place. My, I've seen a lot since a keeper here, as a keeper here, but when, ju when just bites yourself like that, the innkeeper clicks her tongue. Oh, what's gotten to me? Grumbling. It's high time to start cooking. Your Grace, please take care of bringing Ekendayo to the agreed place. Lindsay and I will do the rest. Good, make it easy for me. Thanks to Tavi, Ekin's old friend, and Alina, the trap has been set. We just need to lure the guests and Ekendayo to into it. The party will take place in the hunting grounds in Camelands. By the way, who should I invite to the party? 
if it's the same hunting grounds we've been to in the past, um, it shouldn't be a problem just to go straight to, after the party, go to meet Keston. Hopefully. But we need to sleep first. We also need to talk to the, um, storyteller on our way out. Let's rest. And we might skip a day too, depending on if that passed the day. Let's see. Is Ragonger still only a day away? Mm, he's two days away. Okay. Maybe we can do it before we might be able to cross the border again. After the after the feast. Storyteller, I haven't seen you in a little bit. Let's see what you've got. I found the shards of an ancient artifact. Can you store me store it for me at the anvil? May I? We found the shards of the Trailblazer Hounds. For that I would gladly take some uh, and ten shards, ten shards. Twelve. Fifteen. Seventeen. Okay. I brought some relics. Torag's pendant. Took it to the dryads. War dog. T uh, dog tags. Okay. Yeah, we need to get some of those. I haven't finished any of those yet. Okay, so we need to bring Ekendayo with us. I guess out of this group, we'll leave Amiri. Yep. Because we also want a party that will go with us to take care of the monsters. I think Ekendayo would actually be pretty useful for, th for that. And we'll still have an animal companion. Alright, so we're going to the hunting grounds, right? Yep, new event. Bring Ekendayo to the agreed upon place. And the other thing is somewhere along the Gudrun River. We don't have like a marker or anything. Hmm. Alright, well let's go here first. Enter. I guess we'll go along the uh, the north bank of the river first, and then if we don't find anything there, we'll go along the south bank. Okay. Uh, Ekin, I don't want you in the front. I guess we'll switch to having Lindsay in the front, or knock knock, but knock knock in the front. And I feel like things just don't snap very well in this one. Okay. There we go. Alright, where do we go from here? I thought it would just like start an event for me. Also, I want your sister. I'm glad you called. You kind of showed why we're not really going to get along in the long run in that uh, council event. I guess we'll just follow the road. Surely it's on the road, right? Next to these dead goblins, maybe? Ah, this must be it. Wow, nobody's here. <laughs> hey. Oh, she's here, too. That's a small, small, small feast. There you are. Ekin, old friend, speak of the devil. Ekin's face freezes in surprise. He says at Tavi and Alina, silently for a moment, completely still. Finally, Ekin turns a quizzical look to you. We wanted to have a picnic for a long time. Join us. Relax, friend. Let us drink a little and talk. Silently pat him on the back. Relax, friend. 
Grabbing Ekin's arm, Alina leads him to the tables with food. Please, come here, Ekin Dio. You don't mind if I call you Ekin, do you? Dog, give him some privacy. Tavi fixes her hair, and you notice a tattoo of a stinging wasp on her wrist. Following wrist. Following the couple with a long stare, Tavi says quietly to you. Please come to me when everyone is busy eating and drinking. I would like to talk to you. Okay. Why celebrate in this backwater when we have the whole castle in our disp at our in our disposal, huh? Or uh. <laughs> okay, so talk to Ekin. Save that for last. Join me. The food is good. Thank you for the invitation, Agronak. Oh, that was Lindsay, not me. <laughs> Dying of boredom. Oblivion and d death. Unconsciousness and uh, alcohol lethar leth lethargy. <laughs> Is it not all the same? A great celebration. It's nice to see smiling faces all around and to forget our troubles for a while. Yeah, I'm sure the people love it, huh? Your Grace, smiling Natavi, nods politely. I admit we got acquainted very suddenly. I'd like to know you better. So what did you want to talk about? Smile in response and leave. We got acquainted very suddenly. <laughs> that's right. I don't know why that's a guffaw right there. Then we met. When we met for the first time, I had to speak to him. Interruptions be damned. What? I had to speak to him. Interruptions be damned. Oh, okay. I understand. What was I supposed to do? I haven't seen Ekin for such a long time, and I was so surprised to hear about him. Hmm. I'd like to know you better. I'm at your service. Where are you from? I grew up in Nantambu, far from here, but never liked that city. I left it years ago, and haven't been back since. I remember leaving it vividly. Little towers covered with bright mosaics dot the horizon, while I lay hidden in the bushes of sugarcane on a rumbling cart, drawn by a by a lame old donkey. Tavi laughs. How did you meet Ekin? We guarded a caravan together. At first, I couldn't stand Ekin. I took his silence for arrogance. But then a sandstorm forced us to spe spend a week in a tiny village. We drank everything the only inn had to offer and got to know each other better. Didn't you say before that he doesn't like taverns? Tavi grins, staring off into the distance. He behaved somewhat differently when he was young. A curious story. And, uh, and old as the world. I can never mention you. You don't say. <laughs> it can't be. Davi looks at you with a smirk. And he is usually so talkative. Keeps talking about himself, his past, his dreams and plans. A couple of jokes here and there. A curious tattoo. A stinging wasp. Doesn't mean anything. Your grace is very observant. Davi runs her fingers over the image. This tattoo is a tribute to tradition. It symbolizes the transition from unconscious dogmatic conformity to mindfulness and self-awareness. That is an elusive answer. Or evasive answer. <laughs> Stop laughing, please. <laughs> I'll probably never get used to this to the straightforwardness of citizens of the River Kingdom. A wasp is the sacred animal of Calistria. I am one of her followers. Let's change the subject. What did you want to talk about? I wanted to ask you a favor. You see, Alina, the innkeeper, treats me coldly, and I have no reason why. Yesterday, for instance, she argued with me before changing the sheets in my room, and today she refuses to pour me a glass of wine. So I was thinking, she wouldn't refuse if the Baron asked himself asked her for a bottle of wine. And why do you need a bottle of wine? Tavi's laughter is soft and musical. What a strange question. Really, why would I need a bottle of wine at a party? Hmm, I'll think about it. Thank you, Agronak. Still, why do you need a bottle of wine? The woman's mysterious smile is baffling. Damn it. Greg, to your health, Agronak. By the way, if you're looking for where to go after the feast, I know a place with a very peculiar menu. We only live once. <laughs> Such a wonderful idea, Agronak. Come now, why didn't you tell us about it sooner? I had a baked a pie. 
Lindsay runs her fingers over the strings intently. Hmm. Thank you for the wonderful idea, Lindsay. Her face brightens. I'm glad you like it. I hope the others are happy too. Especially Ekin. Isn't it hard to play and talk at the same time? Ha! Huh. It's a matter of practice. Lindsay, I think now's the perfect time for one of your performances. Are you sure? Have you had a, have you had time to talk to everyone? Oh, come to think of it, give me a little more time. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. What can I do for you, Your Grace? Alina, could you give me a bottle of wine? Don't bother with the bottle, Your Grace. I'll pour for you. Just bring a glass. Uh, I need a bottle for N Natabi. She's our guest. You can't refuse her food and drink. And still, I prefer it. Are you answering your ruler's command with a question? Uh, I need a bottle of wine. Now I'm going to count to three. <laughs> uh, I'd still prefer a bottle. As you wish. Thank you for organizing such a wonderful party for Ekin. My pleasure, Your Grace. I'm happy everything turned out this way as well. Besides, entertaining a man such as Ekin Dayu is a pleasure. The innkeeper giggles, covering her mouth with, her, with a handkerchief. Ekin pretends not to hear. Well, I'm going to go check on in on some of the others. The ranger greets you with a curt nod. Your Grace, must want to talk to Ekin. I'll go make sure everyone has enough to drink. Looking at Eliana's back, Ekin turns to you, fixing one of his belt bags. Cunning plan to bring a hunter to a feast. Call him to a hunt. You know Lindsay, she has a creative mind. Elena told me. Thank you. Point out a glass. Drink with me? Ekin looks uncertainly at the offered glass. Help yourself. It's time to relax. Don't force yourself if you don't feel like it. Elena's wine is quite good. It's your choice, though. Ekin is silent for a moment, then pours himself some wine and takes, tastes it. Then his face relaxes slightly. Not bad. Hope we didn't do more harm than good. Are you just having fun? Ekin chuckles and nods competently. It's good to be among friends and trees, and better still, not holding a bow. I find it interesting to look at faces, listen to what they ha what they say to each other. I missed it. How are you doing? Life is life. It goes on, whether we wish it or not. What do you mean? Tired of fighting? Ready to lie down and give up? Remain silent. I remain silent. Fuck you, game. Ekin tugs at the buttons on his, of his jacket and lowers his head. What do you mean? I'm still thinking about them. Ekin stares into the distance. I wake up with the first rays of the sun. I see the faces of my family. Fire turns to ashes. Midday turns to midnight. And when the stars are shining, I still think of them. Some days bitterness and rage fill me. I drive them away. Other days I feel a smile on my face and I appall myself. Only hunting, mu only hunting numbs my feelings. But the farther I follow the trail, the darker the woods are, and the harder it is to find my way back. Sometimes our feelings scare us, but your grief and your anger are justified. One can't order one's heart to stop seeking revenge and justice. Don't submit to despair. Deep inside you, deep inside you want to be happy again, and your family would want the same for you. Don't be ashamed of the moments where joy returns to your life. Only you can decide what path is right for you. I believe you will make the correct choice. Enough whining. Put yourself together. Don't submit to despair. Ekin smiles slightly. Easier said than done. But there is wisdom in your words. I see Elena is trying very hard to please you. She is the lady of the house. This is her responsibility. This does not ruin your fun. A faint smile spreads on Ekin's face. There is very much of her. All at once. However, she is a good woman. I think this is more than a sense of obligation. I thought about it. Time will tell. Let's talk about something else. Uh-huh. Why did you never tell me about Natavi? He shrugs. Why? How'd you meet her? Guarded caravans. She talked a lot. I thought she must be in love with her own voice. Ekin winces. But over time, we walked many roads together. I learned she had a steady eye and a strong hand. And then the desert taught her to close her mouth. Sand gets in. Ekin smiles slightly, but his eyes are joyful. 
Why'd you stop talking? The ranger rubs the back of his head and then smirks. Amanda said, a caravan is here. You'll go to the tavern again. Natavi is a bad influence. And then Natavi started coming less and less. Were you close? Ekin looks at the grass beneath his feet as fire and wind. I see. Ekin nods. I'm going to get something to eat. Tavi, I've got your wine. Open the bottle of wine ostentatiously. Ostentatiously and sip from it. <laughs> Here, I hope you like it. Casting a warm glance your way, Tavi nods gratefully. Thank you very much. Now, if you don't mind. I do mind, actually. Elena, would you please find a wine opener for me? Hmm. Would you please wait? So, my friend, I'll just steal you for a moment. Hey, where are you going? Lindsay looks up at you, surprised, trying to keep the rhythm. Where are you going? If you leave now, the whole plan goes to goes to pieces. Clear as day. I just wanted to break from the noise. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to follow them. Maybe I talk to you? No, I guess I talked to Lindsay. Nope. Who do I talk to? Um... I do what I must. What do I do? Oh, are you sure? Have you had time to talk to everybody? I'm sure. Begin. Even though I can die, I was not here. Ahem. <laughs> Your attention. My friends, let's raise our glasses. Let's celebrate our adventures. And that we have others to share with them with. Also, let's thank Alina for her generous feast. The evening was wonderful. Alina bows, turning red. And now I'd like to play something special for you. I haven't composed anything for a while, but this is a special occasion. Striking a theatrical pose, Lindsay begins to play. Ekin quietly takes a place next to you. Music starts flowing. Lindsay's performance isn't perfect, but it is deep and emotional. One cadence flows into another, and music echoes among the trees. Suddenly, you notice that Ekin is standing much closer than you thought. You realize he's slowly moving closer to you, fidgeting from foot to foot and trying not to look at anyone. At the same time, Alina is trying to lean closer and closer to Ekin, trying to touch his shoulder. Noticing your look, she gives you a sharp look. Try to shove Ekin closer to Alina. Ekin, my friend, could you crowd me so? Turning red as a beat, Ekin whispers an apology and moves toward Alina. She grabs Ekin by the arm, looking at you gratefully. Finally, Lindsay strikes the final chord, and the sound fades. Pleased with her performance, Lindsay receives well-deserved applause. Look at you, tilting head to... Looks at you, tilting head to the side, sniffs your hand. The wolf who had... Who was standing nearby for... The wolf who was standing nearby before wags his tail and approaches Ekin. Ah, oh, just look at that, Ekin. He seems so loyal. You have to give him a name. You do. You've been together for so long. You've been through so much together. Davi shakes her head. The heart wants what it wants. Why would one fake affection when there is none? I think he deserves a name. If you need to keep, if you need to get over yourself to do this, I can then do it. If you need to get over yourself to do this, I can then do it. Then don't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> keep silent. He deserves a name. Looking at the dog and thinking for a moment, I can smile slightly. His name is Akpo. Alina looks at Ekin and seems to forget about the whole world for a moment. That's better. A wonderful, imposing name. Well chosen. By the way, friends. Not to sound too mundane, but I'm quite tired. We still have to get to the city. Maybe it's time that we pack up?
Oh, did we go back to the capital? And a feast of feasts has been completed. Very good. Good XP from that too. The evening was great. We enjoyed it so much. Ekin seemed to enjoy himself as well. And we managed to dispel his gloom. If only for a night. Hey. It's better than, than nothing, right? Yeah, we still got a while. We just turned level 10, so I'm being a little greedy <laughs> looking at it. All right, let's go talk to Ekin real quick before we head out to the river. Also, we should check the time. Maybe we rest and take a day. That way we can do the, um... The other monster invasion. All right, Ekendayo is where? Down here. Also, do we need to sell? I guess we could check before we leave. There are a couple of things we can sell. Ekin, my friend, and Akpo. Ekin stands absorbed in his thoughts, which must be heavy. Be as heavy as the gaze of his dark eyes. Noticing you, he gives you a distracted nod and waits for your question. I hope you enjoyed the party. His brow furrows anxiously. Finally, he answers. Yes, nice to see old friends and spend time with new ones. But, hmm, next time, warn me, especially if Alina will be there. What did you and Natavi do when she took you from the party? Talked. Remember the past. Don't tell me you thought. Ekin stops and turns bright red. No, I didn't. Now I do. <laughs> I won't torture you. See you, buddy. I'm off. All right, it is, it's pretty late. Let's go and rest. That way we won't have to worry about fatigue along the, the river route. Double load. There we go. Into here. Go here, we'll skip a day. This might get our military up to the next rank too. Triumph. Our, our scouts confirmed the presence of monsters and local militias successfully eliminated the threat. Fantastic. No, we're still at 55, okay. High priest seeks your advice, okay. You're on this job now, Ragonger. Good. And let's see what Jod wants. I bear bad news, Your Grace. A number of foul idols have been seen around your new capital. They don't belong to any god known to me, and strange loners seem drawn to them, which only gives me greater concern. I suggest we tear them down and be done with it. Who knows what evil still lingers in the stolen lands from the old times. In any case, they certainly don't belong here. Grind these strange idols to dust. I have no wish to see strange shrines in the area. Divine plus three. Leave the idols where they stand. Someone worships them. And we have no right to interfere. This is kind of what we've been going with, huh? Leave them where they stand. John sniffs. You're making a mistake. What if something hide hideous crawls out from under them? Some demon or worse. You're simply too kind, Your Grace. Too kind and not firm enough. Maybe. Maybe I. Maybe he's right. <laughs> but no, we've already kind of started preaching the idea of worship whoever you want here, as long as you don't hurt people. Oh, wow, I gotta select the whole party again. Uh, Lindsay, Kinira. I think it was knock knock, and then Kinira, you and you. There we go. I do want to bring Ekin with us. I do think he'd be the best in the hunt of, for monsters. And maybe, you know, 
have an animal companion still. I don't think Akpo is as good as the leopard, but... Yeah, I probably should have gone for... Oh, we did get one divine for that. Oh, it's ready to rank up too? Nice. I guess that's what that, that, that's what that was. Loyalty's getting pretty high again. Very loyal subjects. I like it. It sucks that we're going to have to waste time for him, him uh, managing curses to do that. Oh, well. Okay, so it's somewhere along the Gundren River. So let's go ahead, head down here. And let's go. I'm assuming we'll find a location. The Goblin Fort. High hewn log walls encircle a hastily built settlement. The apex of the fort is a hill on which a totem of Lamashtu has been erected. Although goblins are not known as skilled architects, the fortifications look rather impressive. Moreover, the little creatures even arranged for a water supply in case of siege. The fort is built right over the Gundren River. Alright. Enter. Let's see what's going on here. Is somebody using the, um... The goblins to do this? It might be the case. 